Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Home Secretary Theresa May has been challenged about why the government wants to redefine marriage at a meeting with Roman Catholic Archbishop of Southwark Peter Smith and the Secretary General of the Church of England William Fittle. Archbishop Smith said that in the light of the fact that civil partnerships already offer same-sex couples virtually all the rights of marriage, the Home Secretary seemed unable to say why marriage should be redefined. The government will launch a consultation about redefining marriage in March and Prime Minister David Cameron has said he personally supports a change. The Church of England have said they are committed to marriage as being between a man and a woman and will respond in full to the consultation when it is launched. And in the US, the governor of the state of New Jersey has said marriage is too important to be kicked around like a political football and that any redefinition should be voted on by the people. The state is currently facing pressure to redefine marriage for the sake of homosexual couples. Governor Chris Christie said he would veto legislation on same-sex marriage if it came to him, but he also said a referendum was necessary because the state was discussing huge change. If New Jersey is seriously looking to overturn hundreds of years of societal, legal and religious tradition, we need to give the issue the weight that it merits. So um, I think this is not an issue that should rest solely in my hands, in the hands of the Senate President or the hands of the Speaker or the other 118 members of the legislature. Let's let the people of New Jersey decide what's right for the state. In Scotland, there's also pressure to change the current definition of marriage and the campaign group Scotland for Marriage is similarly calling for a referendum on the issue. In an astonishing claim, American President Barack Obama has said that abortion can help daughters fulfill their dreams. The remarks came in a White House press release on the 22nd of January, marking the 39th anniversary of a Supreme Court decision on abortion. The press release affirmed that abortion is a fundamental right and that government should not intrude on private family matters. The President's controversial comments come as private clinics in the UK that carry out abortions for profit will be allowed to advertise on television and radio from the end of April. The Broadcast Committee of Advertising Practice say there is no justification to prevent the adverts as long as they are not harmful, offensive or misleading. But Dr Peter Saunders, Chief Executive of the Christian Medical Fellowship, was critical of the move, saying that having an abortion is a deeply traumatic experience that can lead to further medical and physiological complications. A 30-second advert is not the place to discuss and promote this. Senior University of Oxford professor Roger Trigg has said social priorities like equality are trumping the right to religious freedom in court cases. The professor, a leading figure in the university's philosophy and theology faculties, made the claim in his new book Equality, Freedom and Religion after studying recent cases in the UK, America, Canada and Europe. He identified a trend towards curtailing religious freedom in favour of other social priorities such as non-discrimination. The case of Lindley and Liddell, a Christian registrar who was disciplined by Islington Council because of her objections to civil partnerships, is specifically highlighted in the book. Professor Trigg wrote, It should have been easy to find a solution here by giving these ceremonies to one of her colleagues, but the need to respect the right to equality trumped the freedom of religious convictions in this instance. There should not be a hierarchy of rights, but it should be possible to take account of all of them in some way. A couple from Cambridgeshire who have been raising their child as gender neutral have revealed that their five-year-old Sasha is a boy. Beck Laxton and Kieran Cooper decided to keep their son's sex a secret because they feared he would be influenced by gender stereotypes. He was encouraged to play with dolls as well as Lego and was also allowed to wear both boys' and girls' clothes. But critics have argued that a child's sex is important to the formation of their self-identity. Lucy Russell of Young Minds Mental Health Charity said, Children aren't experiments. Early child development is about finding an identity. Knowing and promoting whether you are a girl or a boy helps with forming one's self-identity. And commentator Melanie Phillips warned of the risk of long-lasting psychological confusion for Sasha about exactly what he is. She said that Sasha's full potential lies in what he will achieve as a boy, not in turning into a girl. In Scotland, independent MSP Margot MacDonald has launched a new attempt to legalise assisted suicide after suffering a resounding defeat with a similar bill two years ago. 
The Lothians MSP has launched a consultation on her new bill, which would allow those suffering from a terminal illness to receive lethal drugs to end their life. But critics warn it would set a dangerous precedent. A spokeswoman for the British Medical Association Scotland said, The BMA is opposed to assisted suicide and physician-assisted suicide. Despite the fact that there have been some changes since the last bill, we still oppose the bill on principle. And Peter Kearney, spokesman for the Roman Catholic Church in Scotland, said, Deliberate killing, even when assisting someone who is in a state of despair, is always wrong. The word facilitators is a chilling euphemism to describe those who would oversee the actual killing. And finally, a new poll has revealed that 85% of Christians in Britain say they are proud of the Queen. The Commerce poll was carried out for Premier Christian Media and is part of a series of initiatives to spotlight the Queen's Diamond Jubilee which will be celebrated later this year. The results of our poll clearly demonstrate an overwhelming sense of Christian pride in our Queen, said Peter Carriage, Premier's Chief Executive. On the eve of the 400th anniversary of the King James Version of the Bible, the Queen spoke affectionately of the book, calling it a masterpiece of prose. And just last month, the monarch's Christmas Day address had a distinctive Christian theme, in which she shared some personal thoughts about her own faith. God sent into the world a unique person, neither a philosopher nor a general, important though they are, but a saviour with the power to forgive. Forgiveness lies at the heart of the Christian faith. It can heal broken families, it can restore friendships, and it can reconcile divided communities. It is in forgiveness that we feel the power of God's love. Prince William also fared well in the poll following his marriage to Kate Middleton last year, with 77% of those questioned expressing their support for him. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.